You can bend reasonably thick boards with steam or pressurized ammonia, but if all you need to bend is something thin, like the sides of this dulcimer, all you need is a little heat. Ow. Whether you're bending thick wood or thin, there is a peculiar property of wood that you must take into consideration for a successful bend. Wood can be compressed a little over 25% of its length parallel to the wood grain, depending on its species, but it can only be stretched to maybe 3%. Wood is composed of long cellulose fibers held together by a glue-like polymer called lignin. Now we're going to pretend that these clamps are made out of lignin. As long as the lignin is hard, it's difficult to bend the wood. But if you can soften up the lignin or loosen the clamps, you can get the cellulose fibers to slide past one another and bend the wood. If you stretch the wood as you do this, the fibers on the outside of the bend take it as an invitation to completely let go of their lignin bonds, and you get stuff like this. To avoid stuff like this, you must compress the wood into the bend. If you watch our mustache handlebars video, I use a bending strap to accomplish this. The stops on the ends of the bending strap capture the wood and keep it from stretching. The fibers absolutely must compress as the wood bends around the form. There's nowhere else for them to go. This allows you to make cool stuff like these handlebars, but there is a way to bend wood without a bending strap using heat only. If you heat up one side of the wood so the lignin gets soft maybe 75 or 80% through the thickness and the other 20 to 25% remains hard, it performs the same function as a bending strap, allowing you to compress the fibers in the heated portion of the wood into the bend. When you remove the source of heat, the lignin will harden again and the bends will become permanent as they are on the sides of this dulcimer. The fly in the ointment is that this only works well with thin wood, no thicker than one eighth of an inch or three millimeters. It's way too difficult to control the temperature inside a thick board or to keep from burning the board while you wait for the heat to soak in. So you apply a lot of heat to one side of a thin board and that side becomes the inside of the bend. You also need something that applies just enough heat to make the bend the moment the lignin softens part way through the wood. That's what this bending jig is all about. It serves as both a controllable heat source and a bending form. It's really nothing more than a propane torch arranged to heat a short length of iron pipe. You can raise or lower the temperature in two ways. Adjust the flow of propane at the valve or move the pipe closer in or farther away from the flame. The pipe itself has some special features. As the flame burns, carbon dioxide accumulates inside, and if it backs up, the flame sputters, and it may die. So I've drilled some holes around the base to allow the carbon dioxide to escape, and I've carefully gone over the pipe with a fine file to eliminate any burrs so you won't scratch the wood. The position of the pipe and the amount of heat that you need will depend upon the species of the wood that you are bending and the nature of the bend itself. To find out what works, you're going to have to do some experimentation. And we're going to start that experiment with this thin strip of walnut. Fire up the torch and allow it to heat the pipe. While the pipe is heating, wet one side of the wood in the area where you want to make the bend. Wear some thick gloves to protect your hands while you're making the bend. I find that welder's gloves work well. Test that the pipe is hot with a few drops of water. They should sizzle, but you don't want them to evaporate too quickly. Rest the wood on the pipe, wet side down, and begin to move it back and forth immediately. You want to keep the wood moving at all times so that it doesn't burn. As you do this, press down on the wood gently, bending it over the pipe. One of the advantages of this process is that you can make some very tight bends, much tighter than I can do with laminate bending, which is taking these strips and gluing them up. Also, you can make reverse bends, as I've done right here. 
You simply heat one side of the wood for one bend and the other side for the reverse. In the dulcimer, there are five reverse bends in a row. That's impossible to do with a bending strap. The trade-off is, is that heat bending is not as precise as lamination, steam, or ammonia. With a little math, you can approach precision, but you can't get it right on the money. For example, let's say that I wanted to make a 2-inch or 50-millimeter radius bend. Now, if I was bending a complete circle, 360 degrees, I'd have to heat up over 12 inches, that's 300 millimeters, of wood. You know the equations. 2 times the radius is the diameter. Pi times the diameter is the circumference. 2 times 2 equals 4. 4 times pi, 3.1416, is 12 inches and change. But I only need to make the bend 180 degrees, half of a full circle. So half of 12 is 6. I'm only going to have to heat up 6 inches, or 150 millimeters length of the wood. I also suggest that you draw out a full-sized curve and cut out a wooden template on a bandsaw. As you work, compare the bend to the template. Even so, getting this bend requires patience, practice, and no small amount of futzing around. You'll get the hang of it, but it takes time. After moving the wood over the hot pipe for a few minutes, you will begin to feel it give as the lignin begins to soften. The wood will take on more and more of a bend. If you see the wood begin to splinter and feathers develop on the surface that is not in contact with the pipe, stop and let the wood cool for a bit. The heat has soaked too far into the wood. If a crack or a buckle develops on an edge, you're putting too much pressure on the wood and you're trying to bend it too fast. Lighten up. And be careful not to bend too far. It's a whole lot harder to take the bend out than it is to put it in. There's one more thing I can do to make this curve as precise as possible. Curved parts are usually part of a larger assembly. For example, when I made this dulcimer, I glued the curved sides to the top and the bottom soundboards. Now, I bent the sides as precise as I could, but then I clamped them in a bending form to make them perfectly precise, and I glued the bottom soundboard onto the sides. The glue joint held the curves right where I wanted them. I'm going to show you what I did using this piece I just made. I'm going to turn this into a precision scoop using a bending form. These two parts are sometimes called match plates. First, we clamp the curved part of the scoop between the match plates to true up the curve. Then we glue one side of the scoop to the curved piece, let the glue cure and remove the form, and then glue on the other side. Cut the sides to size, add a handle, and you've got yourself a scoop. Later on, you can tell folks how you painstakingly bent the curved portion of the scoop to hold 5 21sts of a liter and not a teaspoon more. The plans for the heat bending jig and this 5 21sts liter scoop are available at the Workshop Companion General Store. The link is in the description. And we have plenty of other books and plans for sale if you'd rather build something else like this assembly table. Remember, please, like, subscribe, and buy to keep the wood bending and the videos coming. And hey, thank you for your kind attention.